Today we're working on our newest landscape and it's going to be a mountain landscape. Now this probably doesn't show up that good but you'll see it soon as it develops. So what I have done is I've taken a piece of white muslin or you can use tan muslin whatever this doesn't matter this is just your foundation everything else will go on top of this so then what I'm going to do is I set this and you notice I made it plenty big because as we continue to, to layer this it's going to shrink up a little bit and I'm probably going to do some trapunto work on this to make it a little more fun so we'll cut batting shapes scrap batting that we'll put behind the mountain ranges and the trees and that will be a lot of fun so what I'm going to do now is I've set it in one to two inches from each side now I'm going to put a pin in up here and a pin up here and this will keep this will keep our pattern well located on this you don't have to use a pattern but this just helps to give us a pretty good idea of how big each space is supposed to be so I'm looking at it I'm gonna look at this and then I'm gonna bring up on the computer I've got a folder of landscapes that I'm using for ideas so the drawing just gives me a few ideas and then I consult my folder of plenty of photos and ideas to d actually decide which of these fabrics I'm going to cut for this quilt. So I'm ready to have fun and I'm going to start with the sky piece first and work from top down to bottom. Okay so I'm going to start out at the top and let me show you right now I want my sky to look a lot like this and I hope you can tell it's not too bright I love the pastel part of the sky and then up here is a nice blue so I'm going to use the sky from this image as my inspiration so the first thing I'm going to do is take some of this nice peaceful blue and tear it and you know it's perfectly fine to tear fabric um, it is one way to get a perfect straight of grain and so then I'm going to come in here and press it because this is going to be my last chance to give it a good press while I'm building while I'm building it all right now let me get my glue because I like using good school glue to do this let me lift this up and then I'm going to take and put some dabs of glue along here not too much um, just something to hold it in place until just something to hold it in place until I can stitch it so here it is up here and then I pull back down my pattern and let me get you over here as far as I can I pull back over my pattern and check the skyline and yes it covers it very nicely all right put my pins back in I just wanted to move that down onto the fabric just to weave it okay so there is my blue now I'm going to use some of my hand dyed and this was ice dyed this past summer and I'm going to use some of this for that pastel skyline so let me see 
I want to find just the right area. So I don't mind hunting and checking just to find just the right part to add. Okay, this was the top, but I and this is where the dies hit first. And you can tell people say, "Oh, batiks are double-sided," but see that little bit of green? Well, if you look over here, it's paler, so that's what came through. But this is the side that it hit first because it's nice and sharp and bright. Now, let's see. Let's see. Okay, now I'm going to get a pen. So what I want to do is I'm going to kind of draw the shapes that I want my sky to be when I cut it out. And now I'm going to cut just inside so I don't have to worry about that pencil. This is, this is a method that I call raw edge collage landscape. And it makes it easy because it's like cutting out construction paper when you were a kid in school pictures and and pretty drawings. Now this may be a bit big. It's looking a little big. So I will be able to cut this down. And first thing I'm going to do is take, let me see. I'm going to take down some of this and this is supposed to look like it is the light coming up from the Sun and don't worry if it's too long down this end that's not a problem okay so now I'm going to lift this back and get an idea for how this looks. Now, I think this comes up too much. I don't want it to look like mountains. I just want it to look like the colors in the sky. And I just look at my inspiration and just cut because this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just for fun. And no one's going to know what you use for your inspiration and if it looked exactly like that. Understand, this is your world. This is what you're, you are doing. Now I'm going to put this right over here. So that it's very clear that it is part of the sky. I don't want this to, I want this to look like a bright part of the sky, not like a mountain. So I'm going to have to bring some of the sky down onto it to make sure that everyone knows what this is. Yeah, I think a few more bits. And you know, I don't have to bring the sky down onto it. I can also do a little cutting away.
I think that makes it look a little bit more natural so it's not such an even line. I'm going to leave it at this for now and see what I think and I can always come in and play with it a little bit more later but I just wanted a nice pastel sky to enjoy to use my hand dyes when I did this I thought oh this would be perfect all right see and don't get too preoccupied with this stage because remember it's going to have layers upon layers upon layers so don't worry don't worry Right now, it looks more important than it really is because we don't have any other layers. But remember, we're going to take this as a whole. It's going to look a whole lot different. And when I pull this back down, you see that by the time I put some of these other mountains in, it's not going to show nearly as much. So don't worry. So now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the background pieces and do the trees last because they lay on top of everything else. So I'm going to get all, I'm going to work from the top down. I might not put this mountain quite as high because I do like that pastel sky showing. So let me, let me go back to, I'm going to go back to my inspirations and take another look. Now I'm looking at this inspiration and a few more ideas of how I want the different land, the colors, and I want, how I want everything to look. I like to show you what I'm looking at because then you'll understand my process a little better. There's another one that I'm looking at. There's another one. And I'm not going to copy any of these. I use them as inspiration and then make it my own. But this is where if you experiment with some hand dyeing, it will give you a lot of possibilities. I went and got a few more fabrics out of my stash. I would like to have a good amount of variety and choice. So I think I'm going to put this piece right here and I think I want it to have some bright white like right here so that it gives a look of some snow on the mountain let me see it's just a matter of auditioning these fabrics to see what has exactly what you're looking for I'm looking for something a little white with some purple like this might be good. Just cut. So now that I've got the fabric I want to use, what I'm going to do is bring my portable light box over, set it on top here, and 
see. It will help me see exactly how I want to put that mountain. I'm going to use some Taylor's chalk now because I want to make sure that I can get this off of that fabric. Instead of using pencil, It doesn't have to be exactly what the pattern says. I make this I make this up a little bit as I go. I leave the bottom a little bit longer because the next piece will overlap it. So I want to have some area where it overlaps. So let's see. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I might leave it a little sharper. Sharp is good with some of these mountains. It's a, it's a good distance away, but I think you want it a little craggy. Okay. So now let me pull this out. Then bring this pattern. And in case you don't remember or you haven't watched my other video, Judy Lilly taught me this method. And I really like it, where you make the pattern, you lay it on the fabric, and you add and add or take away, but you kind of stick with a pattern so you have an idea of what you're doing. Now one thing I'm wondering is this going to show up enough? And I'm thinking it might not. This is, is nice and bright. You know what I'm going to do? Wait one second. I have an idea. I went and got some of my tool. Because when you have a sky that maybe is a little too sharply bright... It's amazing what a layer of tool can do. And these are all part of your tools, so don't worry about using it up. This is what it's for, because there's no reason to just hold on to it. This is what this you bought this for. And if you don't like it, you can use it for something else or throw it away. But these are your tools that you need to do the job you want to do. This is going to act as a little fog, a little smog. They, this is going to act like the um, atmosphere that makes things look a little, little less sharp. But white might be good. Do you see that? It just takes that edge off. Do you see the difference? Here's before and here is after. And it's still bright, but it, it kind of... And you know, and I could always just put it along the edges. That might be good too. All right, so trying to decide which one do I want to use. Does this dull it down too much? Yeah, this one might dull it down too much. So I think I'm going to want the white. You can always take your tool and you can use fabric markers and color it whatever shades you'd like. 
Okay, I'm going to look at, I'm going to check between two layers and one layer. For right now, I think I'm going to use one layer. Just to give it a little bit of softening. And this glue will dry clear, so don't worry. I know it's showing up as white now, and you're going to be putting a mostly invisible fabric over it. And I can always come back and trim it above there a little. I don't want to trim it exactly where it is. But I can always come back and trim it a little. Alright. Let me make sure there's glue. And the glue, remember, is just to hold it in place until you get a chance to go... Let me see. You have to be careful. You don't want the iron very hot on this. Just enough to dry and tack it into place. So now, let me see. What happens now if I drop this in? And don't worry, I can always come back and outline it with outline stitch. And that might just be just what it needs to stand out. Let me see. I think I like it. I can always change it later. So for right now, I think I'm going to leave that, bring it down just a little, alright, let me put, and to keep it in place, before when I glue it down, just pull up part of it, glue it, then pull up this part, because if you pick the whole thing up to glue it, you'll have moved it. So now I'll come back with my iron, and just carefully do a little pressing in place. Alright, so I've got that one. Now, I need this one. And what I have to decide is what are the colorations do I want to use. I think I'm going to come in next. I need to get my light box. And remember to make it longer than it needs to be so that the other pieces can then lay over it. this back and place it. it again. Now I've dropped it down a little lower. wonder if I want to, let me bring it up just a hair. Let me see. Okay. 
Sometimes if you put the iron on it and the glue dries, you have to touch it back up. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, we'll do this piece. It'll cover these two. I think I'm going to introduce blue over here. See what I have for blues. I have this, and this, and this. I'm kind of thinking I want this one with some of the white at the top. I like that. Or do I want this part? I think this might do it. So I get the basic shape with the light box, but a lot of times I would rather just look at it and cut it. So, oh, this is great. I love all the white parts that I was able to shave. So I know this is going to fit here. And don't worry about getting it the sharp, you know, you might worry that, well, it's not quite as sharp as it should look. Because you will come back in with thread and with markers and make it exactly what you want. Like, I'm dropping this down a little bit so I can see a little bit more of that sky. I worked hard on that, dyeing that fabric for that sky, and I want it to show. All right. I think that's pretty good. So now I'm going to glue it down. I'm thinking I might go with this one. So let's give it a shot. If we don't like it, we can always come back with another one. I think we need a nice, bold, dark color. So let me get my light table. Now, if you don't have a light table, you know how you can make one of these very cheaply? You just use a piece of that foam core board, like I made the little holders with. You get a piece of that foam core, and you make a box and you put a piece of plexiglass on the top and put a little bulb inside or a flashlight inside and you'll have yourself a light table you don't have to spend money for those things okay oh this fabric is so dark it's not going to it's not going to show me but let me i think if i make the fabric a piece this long Let me see. Start going down to about here. And this about this long. Okay. I would always cut it a little bit bigger than you think you need. Because that way, if you cut it a bit too small, then you have to cut another whole piece. So always cut it bigger than you think you need because you can always cut away and save it, save the bits for applique, whatever. But you can't put new fabric back on. So 
Yep, I don't think I need the light box for this one. It's just, Like I said, it's just too dark. So what I'm going to do is kind of look at this, look at this top line, and draw it with my chalk. I'm looking to draw this line here. Now I have just decided I'm going to add another piece to this. So first let me glue this one in place. Alright, looks good. Okay. Alright, whoops, I want to leave this back for a moment. I want to add a darker blue over here. And I, I've noticed that I've got this piece coming in it's coming in a little close, so I might come up here. I'm going to alter this, and you don't have to do this. Thinking, coming in here like this, and and no, maybe I'll have come up something. I want it to be different looking than this one, so maybe what I need to do is come like that. There we go. Go up where this goes down. Don't want it too cookie cutter. Because I saw this cute fabric over there and I know it's supposed to be clouds but I think it'll make really cool little mountain tops. So I would like to use this. And I tell you what, I absolutely love having my fabric on these mini comic boards that I got from Connecting Threads. Love it because it makes it so easy to keep my fabric organized and to be able to go into the closet and just leaf, leaf, leaf through, find what I need. And that's the, what I love about landscapes and doing art quilts is because you can change your mind anytime you want. And I'm a girl who likes to change her mind if she needs to. Oh, okay. Oh, that's neat. Bring it down just a touch. And then put this in front of it. Okay, see what I'm doing? But that way I get a light blue and a dark blue. And then the light purple and the darker purple as I come closer to the front. Alright. So I'm liking this. What do you think? This is looking less, it's looking more mountainy than the sunny sky, but I think we'll have to make sure that we do a nice sharp outline of the mountain when we're done. Because don't forget, I told you it's going to go through stages where you're going to like it and you're not going to like it and you'll wonder what have I done. It will all work out. Alright, so now we have this nice dark purple right before the water. We've got these that we want to choose what colors. So, this is probably going to be too bright. I, was, I thought this would be cool, but I think it's going to be too bright. But this might be awesome over here behind this one. All right, I think I know what I want. This one is going to go here. 
then the bright green will be the closest to us. Then this dark grassy green one. And then I think this one back a little far away, which will be a nice transition between the purples and the greens. Alright. And I want a darker part of this. I'm not going to use this part. I'm going to try to stay in here. And remember, you have to have some of the dull colors. You might think, well, that's not even really green. But it's about making it pop. Because if it all is too similar, it's not going to be special. All right. So now, let me just, I'll just lay it right here. And let's get it. I'm just going to watch this line right here as I cut. And I just realized I need my water. Now, I wonder if this might be good water. I don't... Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at what I have for water. I have this. I can always use the sky, which might be the best choice. I can use some of this, but that looks a little too busy. for This water this is going to be a little mountain pond. Mm, these might be too busy. I'm thinking... I might want that sky because you do know how, you know, water reflects sky, vice versa. So, I think what I need to do is use this and cut a piece about, lay it up right here. See how I don't measure and get worried about things? I just enjoy. Okay. I think this is going to be big enough. Rip this off, put my waters out of the way, and don't worry if we want to make it look a little more shiny like water, we can always do that with thread painting. Sometimes when you tear fabric, it's good to come get press it afterwards because the edges will want to get a little wrinkly. But so this, the water, the good thing about the water's edge, I think I'm going to put this reflection up here. Good thing about the water's edge is water is very level. I don't have to worry about doing any undulating because it finds its own level. So I'm just going to cut a nice crisp edge along here. Alright. And I tell you, this is why it when you fall in love with landscape, consider buying or or if you see scraps being given away, Collect what you can find because you don't need that much fabric. It's not like with pieced quilts. So this is the easiest piece of all to cut because, look at that, everything else is going to lay on top of it. Bring this down just a touch. All right, then come back in. Well, first let me go ahead and glue this since it looks good. Yes, I like this. I like that it's bouncing the purples back and around. So, I like this. Alright. And, yeah, I think, I think, what do you think? I think I'm going to like this.
And you know what? I love the lines in this water fabric. Sometimes you just have to take it low and slow, relax a little bit. I'm so glad we added the dark blue in here. I'm very glad we did that. All right, so now we just have two more pieces of fabric to add before the trees. We're doing it. We're doing it. All right, this is the next piece to add because then this piece will go over top of everything. So let's pull out that dark green, which I'm glad it wasn't too much bigger. And remember, we want the the what looks like trees we want that pointing up so it's going to have to go on this way and it's going to go right here i'm gonna pull it down so i don't waste it because i love this fabric and do you see how there is absolutely nothing to be worried about doing this it is so easy there is no right or wrong it's just play and if you make a wrong cut you cut another one and you save what you already cut for another project so I thought let's start nice and simple we're gonna have such fun putting the dye colors and the thread painting you won't believe how this thing is going to come to life when we start doing that and what a lot of fun that is and I'm thinking we might put a deer in I think that would be just super I've got a big enough piece here. I'll take, this is one of the mini comic boards that I really enjoy organizing my fabric on. I've got a couple more packs coming in because I used it up pretty good. Now see, look at this dark part. Wouldn't it be great to use this where the trees are going? It'll give instant shadow. So I'm going to pull it up here. Oh, I like this. Instant shadow. So now I need to come down to here. All right, so I know I can cut it here. And this is another one of my Jenny fabrics. And you wonder why I love my Jenny so much. <laughs> okay, so this is great for shadow. All right, and then I know I can cut it here and go over it's going to go all the way across which is kind of nice you know it's it's nice with all these pieces starting and stopping and starting and stopping it's really nice to have this go all the way across okay i'll cut that excess off and this piece will go from edge to edge I'm going to take off my selvage here. I like saving my selvages. I keep saying I'm going to make something with them. I haven't done it yet. There's always hope. All right. So, here to here. And I love letting the fabric do the work for you. I'm just going to real quickly put it back on my board. One thing I've promised myself in getting these boards and spending, it took a lot of time to get all my fabric organized and on the boards. And I said, girlfriend, you're going to keep it that way. And I wanted to make sure I got this out over the Thanksgiving holiday for some of you who have time off and might have a chance to play. 
because you know what? I think the best thing about holidays is having time to play. It doesn't matter how old you are. We all need to play. I mean, this was so easy. Come on, guys. You know this is easy. Anybody can do this. You're just playing. And remember, no, don't show them what you wanted it to look like. Just show them what it looks like. <laughs> Unless you're real proud of how, how good you did with it. But you don't have to show anybody anything except what you're happy with. Because the thing is, we need to play like nobody's watching. Play like nobody's even going to see it. Because it, that's the way we have fun. And then if we feel like showing it to them, then that is just grand. I like it. So what do you think, guys? I mean, not bad, huh? And we put some tool up here to kind of soften the, the sky. And we'll probably do a little bit more softening of that. Then we're going to bring in some dramatic edges so that the pale, farther away areas kind of pop out to us. I love the water and how it re reflects from the sky. And so, what I want to do now is take two of the pins out. I'll put one over here because now we're going to do trees. So, here are all of my... But I don't think I'm going to get too crazy doing a whole lot on the trees. And let me tell you why. Because I want this to be about the view. And the trees are going to be silent sentinels. They're just going to kind of stand there and record the passage of time. So, I'm going to use this fabric for the closest tree. And I'm going to go find one more tree fabric. I'll be right back. I went to find some more tree fabric and I actually found this. And I'm going to put this close up put this one with that has less de sharp detail put that little farther out Okay, I'm replacing this blue because Mark came down and said it looks too much like clouds, which it is, but I thought it would be okay, but he said it doesn't look good. So what I'm going to do, what I did is pulled it loose, then I'll, let me press it to get it back in shape. And I'm going to use this as my pattern. Okay, so I went over and I found a striated. I found a striated blue that I'm going to use instead. Maybe I'll put it. Yeah. All right. It's now's the time to change it. And you know what I've. Don't tell him I told you this. But he's usually right. Darn it. <laughs> so, I have found when I don't listen to him, I regret it. So, he is upstairs sanding our kitchen cabinets because I decided I couldn't take them anymore. The finish was popping off. It looks terrible. So, that's what we're doing for Thanksgiving. And... I can't, I'm going to do the painting and he's doing the sanding, the prep work. And uh, 
And that is what we're doing instead of eating turkey and watching football. But we're not real big football fans, so that's absolutely fine. Yeah, he, he thought that just looked a little hokey. So we'll trade it in. If I, I mean, I really like this, so let's do it right. I like it. What do you think? I think he was right. And I love how the top kind of fades out into the fog. All right, one more tree. We're done. All right. I like it very much. So here is the pattern. Here's what we started out with the pattern and now I'm going to take it apart now I'm going to take it off and let you see what we've created what do you think I think I like it so I will see you next week when we take and start doing thread painting and then we'll finish it off with some embellishments with either ink tents or whatever you have handy but I can't wait thank you for joining me for this and I will see you next week for our mountain landscape thanks bye bye